Hello, my name is Associate Professor Sumit Raniga. I'm a shoulder and elbow specialist here at the Macquarie University Hospital. I'm the head of upper limb surgery and therapy, and I also direct the Translational Shoulder Research Program. It's my pleasure to have the opportunity to discuss my passion with you today, which is the shoulder, and tell you a little bit about some of the conditions, the common conditions that affect the shoulder, including arthritis and also rotator cuff tears and the natural history of those conditions and some of the things we can do to help you if you have those conditions. So first of all, I'd like to take you through the fascinating anatomy of the shoulder. The shoulder is one of the most remarkable joints in the body. And you may say that I'm biased because I'm passionate about it, but that's the truth. If you think about the shoulder, there is no other joint in the body that allows you or affords such a remarkable range of motion. You know, the shoulder brings you out into the front it allows up you to reach up high. It allows you up to reach behind your back. There is no other joint in the human body that I know of that gives you such a remarkable range. And the way it can afford that is because its anatomy is so different. Let me show you. This is a simple model of the shoulder. It's got a very elegant replacement, which I will tell you about in a moment. But the most important thing to understand is the uniqueness of its anatomy. It's a very unconstrained or highly unconstrained environment as opposed to something like a hip joint, which is a ball and socket joint, or a knee joint, which is like a hinge joint. It's essentially like a surfboard with a golf tee and a golf ball on it. And you can straight away realize that, wow, how does this structure work and stay in joint while it takes you through all these amazing positions in space to allow your hand to work? In fact, if the shoulder doesn't work properly, the hand becomes pretty useless. And the way it works is that it has a, such a dense nerve supply. Huge amounts of motor control from your brain controls the bones, the ligaments, the tendons, the muscles, to work in concert, almost like a symphony, to give you this remarkable range of motion. And you can very easily imagine that if any parts of these sort of faculties fall apart or any parts of the anatomy are not doing what they're supposed to, it can cause you trouble. And that could be pain, it could be weakness, and overall dysfunction where your shoulder just doesn't perform to the best of its ability. One of the key elements for shoulder function is something called the rotator cuff. A lot of people talk about the rotator cuff, but very few people really understand it. And it's because our understanding of the rotator cuff and its function has really enhanced over the last 15 to 20 years. The rotator cuff are a group of four muscles and tendons that actually surround the entire shoulder, deep inside. There's different entities of it that do different movements. But the key thing to remember is that they work as a group to keep the joint centered so that the big deltoid muscle on the outside can actually move your shoulder around. If the rotator cuff has any pathology, whether it be tears, or it's not working well because it has tendonitis or tendinopathy, then what will happen is that the shoulder will start dancing around in the joint and it'll never be biomechanically stable to allow full movement to occur. And therefore, the rotator cuff has an essential role in providing stability to keep the ball on the socket, to keep the ball on the golf tee, to allow movements to occur. Because we are, I've, we've already discussed the fact that this already is like a surfboard. So stability at every level is key. Now, each entity of the rotator cuff has a different effect. So the first one is the subscapularis. It runs right here in the front. This is the one that helps you internally rotate and reach, helps you reach around your back. Then you have the supraspinatus, which runs in this very area here and inserts into the humeral head. This is the one that helps you reach up high. Then you've got the infraspinatus and teres minor that runs in the back of the shoulder. And this is the one that helps you externally rotate. And depending on where the pathology is, where the tears may be, hence you get manifestation of symptoms from that. Talking about rotator cuff tears, what we've understood now is that we can actually predict with time which group of people may develop rotator cuff tears, which people, group of people may develop osteoarthritis. They're two mutually exclusive conditions. 
There are some people who have a propensity to develop de degenerative rotator cuff tears. And there are some people who will go down the path of arthritis. Now, focusing on, focusing on degenerative rotator cuff tears, there are a lot of people out there with some degree of tearing of their shoulder joint, uh, shoulder joint rotator cuffs, because of the wear and tear that occurs. And not everyone needs surgery. But then there are other people who've been on the rugby field and they've had a collision and they tear it right off the bone. And these younger, physiologically high demand, active patients with full thickness tears may need surgery. The reason why is because when you get a rotator cuff tear and the tendon tears off the bone, right off the bone, it cannot heal. That's the end of that process. The tear will stay in space away from the bone and that tendon and muscle won't work as it usually used to. And so one of the things to think about is can we treat this patient and get all the other muscles working well enough so we can compensate? And if that doesn't work and they still have weakness and they can't perform the activities they can, then surgery comes into play. Or in younger patients, when they have these traumatic tears, we know that these tears can actually progress. It's just like having a tear in your pants. Every time you sit up and down, it can progress, it can become bigger. And not only that, the tear can run further away from the bone, it can retract, so it can be hard to bring back. And the last thing that can happen is those muscles from which the tendon comes can start filling with fat. And when it does that, those tears become unrepairable, which can have significant repercussions for shoulder function in the future. And in fact, then the humeral head can become completely unstable and you can start developing a different type of arthritis called a rotator cuff tear arthropathy, which is essentially saying rotator cuff's not working, the humeral head is not in the right place, and now the patient starts developing a different type of arthritis. The rate of progression of that we cannot predict, but the literature certainly states that this is something that can happen with some patients. And hence, if you have a full thickness rotator cuff tear, it's appropriate that you get an opinion from a shoulder and elbow specialist or an expert in this area that can guide you and give you options, give you information, education, so you can make the right choice for yourself. Because one of the things to remember is that the shoulder doesn't kill you. So it really is an elective choice. It's a matter of deciding, well, can I live with this function? And can I change my lifestyle to accommodate that? Or is it something I can't live with and I need to do something about it? If it comes to the fact that you need surgery for rotator cuff repairs, in terms of rotator cuff tears, and you need to have it repaired, nowadays most of us do this fully arthroscopically. It's a matter of cleaning up the tendon, cleaning up the bone, anchoring the tendon to the bone, and allowing your body, your biology, to heal it. And that's generally the process of rotator cuff repairs. What about those people who've had tears a long time ago, or have now developed arthritis because of the tears they've had in the past? Well, in the past, we didn't have many solutions for these patients because the conventional replacements we did, like where we replaced the ball for ball and socket for socket, used to fail. But now, over the last 20 years, we've had significant advancements in research. And we've got a special replacement dedicated to these patients who have rotator cuff tear arthropathy. So they have arthritis in their joint, but they don't have the rotator cuff to stabilize the joint and hence they can't move the joint like you and I can. And this is where the reverse total shoulder replacement comes in. This is a very different type of replacement. You can see the balls on the top and the sockets on the bottom. It changes the biomechanics of the shoulder completely so that now you're not reliant on a rotator cuff you don't have, you can use the deltoid to move the shoulder. And this has really revolutionized our treatment of these patients who have significant arthritis, but they don't have rotator cuffs to move the shoulder. That gives you a bit of an overview on rotator cuffs. What about arthritis? So with shoulder arthritis, it's quite a different problem. It's all related to your cartilage. So you see, the joint surfaces are all lined by cartilage. So in the case of the shoulder, just as I described the golf tee, and the golf ball is lined by cartilage. And that's what allows this beautiful smooth movement. It's fluid lined. It's quite amazing how little friction there is in the joint. And hence, we're able to live for long periods of time with amazing range of motion and function. But there are people who actually lose cartilage. 
And the problem is it's a slippery slope. As soon as you lose a little bit of cartilage, the chances are that this will continue to progress and you lose more and more and more. And again, the rate of progression sometimes is hard to predict. At the end of the path, a lot of people come and see me and they don't have any cartilage left. Now it's bone to bone, extremely painful, very stiff shoulders, very dysfunctional, lots of night pain. And these are the people that may benefit from having something done for this. And the definitive solution for arthritis of the shoulder, once everything else has been tried, like injections, physio, whatever you may want to try, and if nothing is working and you still have a very painful stiff shoulder and you're having pain at night, then it's the time to then intervene and do a shoulder replacement. And for that, we have two types of shoulder replacements. This is the anatomic conventional shoulder replacement. We replace the ball with a ball and the socket with a socket. And now we've advanced replacements to a level where we really understand the materials we put in as well. So in this case, this is ceramic and this is polyethylene infused with vitamin E so that the wear rate of the joint goes down. Because as you can imagine, it's just like buying a new car. Cars can wear out if you drive them too far for too long. In the same way, the shoulder replacement can have also the same problems. And so as scientists, we're always trying to figure out how do we get the biomechanics perfect so it's as close to a normal shoulder as possible? And how do we keep these joint replacements in for as long as possible so that we don't have to do revision surgery over and over again? It's about survivorship and it lasting for the rest of your life. And that's the challenge we have. And so the anatomic total shoulder replacement, in summary, is designed for people who have an intact rotator cuff Everything else is working, but the joint is worn and we replace it and it can have a profound impact on your life and your function. Then on the other side, we have this replacement, which I mentioned before. And this is designed for people who have end stage arthritis, all the same problems, but probably compounded by the fact that they also can't move in certain directions because they don't have a rotator cuff. They don't have a rotator cuff to stabilize that joint. And so we have this design called a reverse total shoulder replacement, which is essentially the ball being on the top and the socket being on the bottom. And again, when you do this replacement, you have a profound impact on the patient's life because they can now lift and place their arm in space and they don't have the pain they had before. So they become a lot more function. It enhances their life but it doesn't rely on the rotator cuff. It relies on the deltoid, the big cape-like muscle we have right here to work it. So these are some of the common things we can do for you as patients with shoulder pathology. And if you're suffering from pain, stiffness, or weakness in your shoulder, or you're struggling to elevate and place your hand into space in different directions, go and see your general practitioner. Talk to them about your problem. And maybe if they feel it's appropriate, they may send you to us and we will do our best to help you.